What's going on you guys? Theo here with the big review back yet again with another King of Fighters All-Star video and in today's video we are going to be doing our weekly subscriber Q&A special where once a week we sit down and we collect some comments and some questions from all of our various socials whether it be Reddit, the YouTube comment section, Discord, or the like and we give them a platform here on the channel but before we get into this week's batch of questions and comments make sure you guys smash that like button and subscribe. We are just shy of 1900 subscribers so let's go ahead and get that done today and let's get into the video and our first comment comes to us from jamie omega knight zero here on youtube who says i think veteran players will benefit highly from a six star card combination system there are several cards that don't get used as much compared to cooldown cards. There are a few minor exceptions, but the majority will probably agree that they don't need five, six star Chris option cards, lol. So thank you for the uh, comment, Jamie, and you are correct. I can vouch for this. Uh, I definitely don't need five of those myself, but yeah, I agree. I think that a combination system for the six star cards would definitely be in the cards dare I say it, um, but I, I do think that that would definitely be a very good system for all of us at this point, you know, specifically veterans, those of us who have a lot of these cards laying around, you know, we don't accumulate them necessarily as much anymore, I don't think, being that most of us at this point have, I don't want to say outgrown the unified banner, but I think a lot of people have pretty much just been steering clear of it, so the unified card banner, for example, they just, you, you don't necessarily pull on it very often anymore, so yeah, I could definitely see it being beneficial. I don't necessarily think it is as dire as a combination system for the imprint stones, which I think needs to happen. I don't understand why that hasn't happened yet, to be honest with you, but I digress. So yeah, Jamie, I definitely agree with you, and I think a lot of veteran players, this has been a topic that has come up quite a bit. There's, there's just a lot of those different quality of life systems and things like that that just feel like they've been overlooked. And I do think that that is something that down the line here they need to look into. But definitely that and imprint stone combination system is another one. We still need a training battle proper system in the game so that we can actually train our characters and take a look at damage comparisons and so on and so forth. There's a lot of different things that you would think would be kind of common sense, but yeah, we're not uh, we're not going to get into that. But thank you for your question, Jamie. I appreciate it. Next up here, we've got a message from Tech Videos who says, anniversaries are crazy important. Marvel Future Fight in its recent anniversary turned the game and the player base upside down with crazy features, events after events after events, free rewards, it was just crazy. Not asking for crazy rewards from King of Fighters All-Star, just make it fun and put a lot of events. 10 to 20k free rubies are getting boring now, let's earn those rubies through events, through gameplay, and other hoping for a blast anniversary. Thank you for the comment tech videos, I appreciate it. And this was on my Saturday chat and chill where I talked about those dev notes and I had talked about the fact that we were going to be getting the anniversary here very soon, here in the next couple of months. It's looking like August is what they've indicated on those live streams in the past. So with that always comes a lot of hype and a lot of expectations. And I had talked about in that video how I really hope that they spoil the fan base with this because you, you need your anniversaries to be big in general in any gacha game. And in this game in particular with the way the past couple of months leading up to this anniversary have gone, I think that they have the perfect opportunity timing wise to kind of right the ship for people. So that's basically where this comment comes from. And I completely agree with it. And the reason I highlighted this comment is because I did want to point out a few things. So for those of you who are unaware, Marvel Future Fight is a Netmarble game. It's a Netmarble property. And so basically, recently they had an anniversary, and I've heard about this from quite a few people. You know, I know Forgos talked about it and so on and so forth. But basically with this game, they had, had been having a lot of issues uh, with the community there. I guess there had been a lot of backlash for a lot of content and so on and so forth. Not necessarily on the scale that we've had in this game. It seems like that was a lot worse over there. Um, but basically whenever they did this anniversary event, it pretty much turned everything around. And all I've heard for the past little while is how great things are going for that game. So I wanted to highlight this comment as a good example of what can change with an anniversary event. Just because things are bad right now or things might seem like they're not going great, I wouldn't say they're bad right now. I'd say they're just kind of not, they're kind of meh 
<laughs> is that is that a way of describing something is just meh but things are just meh right now so you know with this anniversary i do have a lot of hope like i said in that initial video and i'm not going to get too much into it and repeat myself from that video if you guys want to check it out the link will be in the description but a hundred percent this comment i believe is the case for this game too at least it can be i think when it comes to the anniversary they can easily write the ship and get things turned around and keep everybody happy and get everybody hype it just comes down to what they implement and what they do i have a lot of high hopes for this anniversary event because I still think that those developers handbooks they've been giving us was really just a excuse for them to tease it so I think they've got a lot planned they've always done really well around the anniversaries here's hoping that we get things like the ruby refund event back and maybe even that infinite summon banner or whatever the case may be just any amount of things that they want to throw at us I think that that would be the perfect time to kind of spoil everybody you know if they're going to spoil anybody in this game once a year it might as well be the anniversary right but thank you for the comment tech videos i really appreciate it and keeping on the topic of the anniversary we have a comment from damien km pang who says okay got your message not spending up until the anniversary contents are revealed collect all the freebies during the anniversary still no spending wait for bugs if none during after anniversary still no spending over past two months, felt I am enjoying the game much more being a free-to-play than a pay-to-play. Before, the money-saving actually offset guaranteed disappointments. Shall see how things work out here onwards. Thank you for the comment, Damien, and thank you for consistently supporting the channel here. Now, when it comes to this comment, there's a couple things I wanted to kind of unpack, and there's a few reasons why I picked this comment. So I did not intend the message behind my Saturday chat and chill to be, you know, save for the anniversary, but I guess I probably should have. If I were a good YouTuber, I'd probably have said that. Uh, <laughs> so with the anniversaries, there is a good point here. And basically, if you inferred from that video that you should be saving for the anniversary, that's not necessarily my intention behind that, but it's probably a good thing if you're inferring that because to be honest with you guys, anniversaries are a perfect time to be saved up for. And to be honest with you, one big thing that a lot of people may not have realized yet is around anniversaries, specifically in the month or so leading up to them, there's typically what we call in the gotcha world bait. And they'll usually try to bait you very hard leading up to an anniversary to zap you of your resources so that way once the anniversary rolls around you're feeling more pressured and more apt to spend money on packages and things of that nature and this isn't something that's exclusive to netmarble by any stretch of the imagination this is for all gotcha systems in general i don't think i've ever played a gotcha game that doesn't operate like that so the whole kind of bait Debate is uh, something that a lot of gotcha players have talked about quite a bit for a long time. And, you know, some people, you know, they, they like it because it gives them a lull and they can just kind of skip and keep saving. But it does trap a lot of players a lot of the time, even if they're warned ahead of time by people that, hey, this is probably bait, you should wait, yada, yada, yada. People still fall for those types of things a lot of the time. So in my opinion, going forward here over the course of the next month and a half or so, if I were you guys, I would be very sparing on what I spend on and I would be very picky. Um, definitely try to prioritize depending on what it is you need for your account and try to use your good practices in general that you would normally use whenever you're trying to assess the value of a banner or a character. Think to yourself, what is it that this character offers my account that I can't already get? Um, so it's one of those things where if it's not something that you feel you are in dire need of or it's not something that is going to address a specific issue for your account, then you're probably better off just skipping it and you'll probably end up appreciating that you made that decision a lot more than if you had just gone in and gone crazy and spent a bunch and then all of a sudden you get blindsided by a bunch of banners or a bunch of new cool things that happen a couple weeks later or so. Yeah, I would say that with that, definitely be wary. Now, another thing in here is the free-to-play, pay-to-play thing that he made a point of, and I do want to talk about that briefly here. You know, I see a lot of people complain about, you know, rates and bad beats and yada, 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 but I also see a lot of people that got very, very lucky on these banners. And it just goes to show that it's all RNG. So never invest into anything in life. Now, this is coming from me, you know, and I don't know if you guys know this a lot about me, but in the background, besides doing all the things I normally do, my day job and all that other stuff, um, I also trade crypto. 
And something that I've always lived by and I have always told people is never spend what you are not willing to lose. And it's very important that you think of that as far as this game as well, because if you are willing to spend 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 100 dollars, whatever the case may be, no matter if you're a minnow, a dolphin, or a whale, you never want to spend more than you're comfortable in losing, right? So what I always try to operate under the assumption of whenever I'm spending, whenever I spend what little I spend here and there, my thought process is always, okay, if I buy this package and I get absolutely nothing out of it, how am I going to feel afterward? And if I think that I'm going to regret it or I'm going to have buyer's remorse, then I just won't do it, right? So that is the way I think a lot of people need to think. You need to not, you need to not part with money you're not comfortable with, right? So just kind of keep that in mind. I feel like that's something that he had kind of got at in this comment, and I feel like is very important for a lot of people. So I just wanted to kind of point that out here. So again, Damien KM Pang, thank you for your constant support of the channel. Thank you for the comment. Let's move on to the next one here. And this one's going to come to us from Pushkar Pandy, who asks, will they give the moon and star imprint stones for BS and SS? Now, this is a good question, Pushkar. I had actually kind of, this is one of those things where you basically just assume that they're going to and don't even really think about it. But when you asked this question, it got me thinking. I would assume so, however. We don't have any confirmation, and this got me thinking, I would almost prefer if they didn't give the SS and the BS characters these new imprint stones. And the reason I say that, and this is just a point that I wanted to make whenever I covered this question, is I feel like it would be a good way to try to bridge the gap in power creep. Now, I don't know or I don't think that the moon and the star imprint stones are necessarily going to be so powerful right out of the box that they could potentially bridge the gap of power between a unified banner and a limited banner character by any stretch of the imagination. But I would potentially like to see that. I would prefer to see that over just seeing them add the BS or the SS star and moon imprint stones and then just have those characters be just that much more broken. It would actually be kind of a cool way to balance things. So honestly, more than likely they're going to, but my preference would be that they didn't and just use this as a way of balancing things a little bit, but I digress. So that is pretty much my answer to the question, but yeah, very good question, and it does have some potential implications there if they would maybe consider not doing that. I think that might actually be good for the game. You guys let me know in the comments section what you think about this topic, because I think that this one has some legs, and I think that this is a good question, and I do think that there are a lot of different ways they could go with this that might potentially be good for the game in ways that they might not have originally intended. So yeah, definitely let me know your opinions in the comment, guys, but thank you for the question, Pushkar. I appreciate it. Now, this next comment comes to us from Nicholas Benedict Go, who says, Some people are going to form conspiracy theories of Netmarble inserting pull chances into your account because you're probably the most well-known player in global. LMAO. So, a couple of things here. First of all, I doubt I'm the best or the most well-known player in global, but um, I would definitely nod that one over to my buddy Forgo. But when it comes to uh, the first part of this, Nicholas, thank you for this comment. Um, yeah, that's already happened and been happening happening for a long time and it isn't just me so it's funny to me how people kind of have a short-term memory when it comes to this kind of stuff like for instance whenever people say things to me like oh well youtubers have some sort of deal with netmarble where they get better pull rates or netmarble gives you know youtubers better pull rates or whatever the case may be all i have to say to that is if that were true everybody would be a youtuber for this game just for the good pulls so yeah definitely no offer has ever been made from anybody i've never talked to anybody at netmarble in my life for one and two i have a hard time believing that be the case considering the fact that speaking of Forgo uh, my poor guy he's spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on this banner and been shafted numerous times so he's not the only one I've also seen uh, my buddy 2300 gaming he's been completely destroyed by the rates in this banner as well so you know it, you just you take the good with the bad you know some of us here on YouTube we're going to have better luck than others you know I think uh I think my buddy Gunny, he did really well with this banner, but, you know, for me, for instance, when I initially went in on it, I got pretty shafted. In two pities, I got three fests total. So, 
you know, it really just comes down to, uh, it, it's just one of those things that all depends on the person and what they've viewed and what they've seen. Obviously, you know, if people have only seen the instances where YouTubers have gotten lucky, then maybe they would have that sort of opinion. But really, there is just no rhyme or reason to it, guys. It's all RNG. There's really no rhyme or reason, like I said. So it's just one of those things. So whenever I see comments like that, you know, honestly, it makes me kind of feel bad because I feel like if somebody's upset about a YouTuber doing well, it probably means they didn't do well. And I never like seeing anybody do poorly. But then again, I think that there's also just a really toxic amount of people out there that want to see you fail and want to see you have bad pulls and want to see the rates be bad. One, because they want to reinforce their own mental opinion of the game that's very negative. And whenever they see people do well, it goes against that narrative in their own head. And so then they end up getting mad. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just one of those things where it just, we all deal with it and it's one of those things where I've been beaten up pretty bad by the rates too. So I just roll with it guys, you know, and you guys have seen that on the channel. I don't get too high. I don't get too low. I pretty much just try to stay even keel. You know, I realize and accept the fact that this is all going to be random chance and it is what it is at the end of the day. If I get lucky, I get lucky. It's kind of like the thing with Iori, right? You know, I went in looking for more Iori memories over the weekend when I did that package. I ended up being able to A5 my Kyo randomly. So, you know, you, you take the good with the bad. Sometimes you get what you want, sometimes you don't. So it's just one of those things. So, you know, to quote Great Profit, you can't always get what you want, right? So anyway, speaking of Iori, next question is going to be from Martin Tagliani, who says, with Iori 2, please, and that's a very long please. As much as I would like to help you out with this one, Martin, and I've said this a few times, speaking of Iori's on our screen currently, uh, with this, I really don't think I'm gonna be able to do much with my Iori. Like, I'm at a point in the game where everything that I am doing right now is way high level. I need Awakening level three or four at minimum in order to really get a good read on these characters with the content that I am able to play right now. You know, a good example of that would be my Reviving Hells dungeon. I'm at tier 48, I think. And so, yeah, it's just, it's one of those things, there's very little I can do. I've thought about maybe just taking him into random story mode or random epic quest or, you know, random this or that, but is there really a lot of value in seeing him beat up on just general tunes in story mode? I, j I don't think so. So again, as much as I want to cover Iori here on the channel, as much as I want to bring you guys some really good hot takes and some juicy info and yada yada, I just, I don't feel comfortable if I can't give a good read on a character doing that. And I feel like it would be disingenuous to you guys if I did that. So I, I, I just don't feel comfortable with it. So it's one of those things where if I, for whatever reason, decide I'm going to go back in and maybe get lucky, which I highly 100% doubt at this point that I'm going to do, I might be able to do that. But right now at Awakening Level 1, there's just not much I can do. But definitely appreciate it, Martin. Thank you for supporting the channel. So this one comes to us from Grow Patapoff from my community tab who wants to know, what is a playpoint list? So this is one I actually had a lot of questions on. So what playpoints basically are, guys, is they're basically a couple, a combination of a couple of things. Basically playpoints, if you go to the Google Play Store, you can set it up on your account it's not for every region I know for a fact it's available in the United States but you'll have to check for your specific region if play points are accepted but basically play points are a combination of that's kind of like money back if you make an in-app purchase slash being able to earn the points by doing little things here and there whenever they give you bonus events and things of that nature on your account on the Google Play Store so basically you accumulate these points right and there'll be a list of games, and King of Fighters All-Star is on that list, and basically each game is going to have different promotions, different coupons that you can purchase with your points and put towards in-app purchases. So for instance, the one that I always like to get whenever I have enough saved up is to get the $10 off coupon, and that $10 off coupon is good for any in-app purchase for the King of Fighters All-Star, and even if it's a $10 package, then you can use that and it's a $0 package and you get a free package package basically so it's a very awesome system I was very glad that they brought it back to the list of supported games but definitely check out the Google Play Store guys if you don't know about this and see if it's available in your country because it's definitely worth it so thank you for this question grow and I hope that helps all of you who have been asking me that question 
This next one's going to come to us from Z Cliff T, who says, Hi there, I've been wondering how you gain rubies so fast. So thank you for the question, Z Cliff. And the reason I picked this one is a lot of people ask me this question. And there's a couple of different factors. So basically, I've always told you guys, I always pick up the subscription packages, right? So the $10 one and the $30 one, I always pick those up monthly. I think that they are, for your money, the best value that you can get in that store. So basically, with those two, you get rubies every single day for a month. You get 100 rubies a day per package. So that's quite a few extra rubies every week. Um, that's one thing that I always do. And another thing is, is I don't necessarily show you guys every little thing that I do here on the channel. Like for instance, uh, over the weekend, I did clear a couple extra stages of Spider Robot. I'm just at the end of it. I've got like maybe three more batches of rubies I can get from that. Um, so I did get those. And of course I got a thousand reimbursed from A5ing my Kyo and so on and so forth, yada, yada, yada. So there's a lot of different things that I do that I don't necessarily put on video because honestly, it's very boring and innocuous and would be not make for good footage. So yeah, it's just one of those things. But the biggest thing that really differentiates my account from some other people or the people who might be watching this is really going to be the fact that I pick up those packages. So I appreciate this question. For those of you guys who've been wondering about that, take a look at those subscription packages over in the in-game shop. Maybe you'll find value in them. I know I do, but that is pretty much that. So anyway, guys, that is pretty much going to be this week's Q&A. I hope you guys found it informative. I always enjoy doing these for you guys. If you enjoyed it, smash that like button and subscribe. I'll be back tomorrow with a new King of Fighters All-Star video. And until then, you all take care. Peace. Continue.